You guys know what that thud means. It's mystery box day again. I cannot wait to crack this open and see what I have to DIY with this time. This is Whiskey and Wit, and if this is the first time we're meeting, welcome. My name is Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. So if you love that too, hit subscribe down below so we can be craft buddies. Now, my box came to me from Jennifer over at Little Bit of Calm and Crazy. I sent a box to Jazz at DIY by Jazz, and the challenges this time are insane. They're always insane. Who am I kidding? I should know that it's always gonna be a challenging thing. So while I crack this box open, a little bit more about the mystery box challenge. It was created and is run by Courtney. Her channel is Creative on the Cheap and she is one of my best friends here on YouTube. I love that she does this. I have such a blast with this. Every other month she gathers a group of DIY YouTubers. There's some people that do it all the time and then we have fun guests each time. All those videos are gonna be organized into a playlist. So when you're done here, head over to Jazz's video and then and also be sure to make your way all the way around back to Jennifer's video as well. It will be a full weekend and beyond of content. I love watching these. I get so much inspiration. So this is not the largest or the smallest by any stretch of boxes that I've gotten over my time doing the mystery box challenge. When I sent Jennifer a box last time, one of the challenge items I gave her was a snorkel. So hopefully she's not paying me back too much, but if she did, I cannot blame her. So Jennifer could have won anywhere for the items in this box. It's an anything goes round. She's sending me two challenge items in here that I have to use. And then I also have to use a grocery bag, like a plastic bag. And then on another project, I can't use any glue. I've got a cute little note in here from Jennifer. It says, I'm so excited for you and your family on your new home. I can't wait to see all the touches you will add for the box challenge. I may have been a little wood heavy, but I know you always create great things. Love Jennifer. P.S. See you soon, my friend. I can't reveal too much yet, but I will be seeing Jennifer and maybe a few other friends very, very soon. So be sure you are following me over on Instagram so you can see all of that unfold when it happens. Ooh, this is cute. A wood cutting board. Then also this. Okay, this is cute. So the back is plain, but then the other side has clips you can hang it this would be really cute for like what am i thankful for or even putting a printable there so my wheels are turning also a little wood sign wood rings she was right there's a lot of wood in here but i'm not mad i love wood stuff some macrame cotton twine this is from dollar tree i have not seen this before some paper bags these are cute i don't know what this is but it's really cute whitewash small cutout plaque ages 12 plus good thing i'm in that range are you thinking what I'm thinking? Do you see the shape? I have an idea already for this. Oh, some Dollar Tree stencils. Oh, Jennifer, not being too mean to me. All right, challenge item one. So I have to use this. <laughs> bright, bright pom-poms. Like this is like traffic vest yellow. And number two. Oh, snack storage. So we've got pom-poms, we've got snack storage, we've got no glue, and a grocery sack. All right, well, give me a couple days, let me think about what I'm gonna do, and then I will come back right here in about three seconds and we'll get crafting. Okay, I've got a plan. We're gonna do fall and Halloween DIYs with all of the items that Jennifer sent me. You guys, I have some great ideas, so fingers crossed they turn out. And we're gonna start with a quick and easy but super cute project using this wood cutout. From the second I pulled this out of the box, I saw a pumpkin, so that's what I decided to do. I grabbed one of these paint stir sticks, the wider kind, because it's a bigger piece of wood. I cut it at about a 45 degree angle with these little tin snips I got from Amazon. I will link them down below. They're really nice to just cut random things. And then I just used a cloth to faux stain it with Antique Wax by Waverly to kind of match the color that was already in the wood. Add a little bit of hot glue just to glue it down and then it looked a little blah to me so I added some raffia around the top, just wrapped it around, tied it in a bow, gave it a couple extra little fringes and this thing was good to go. This is great to add to vignettes that have a lot of color already. So here I've got the orange in both my garland and the flowers, but then this is a pumpkin so it's fall but it's neutral so it kind of pulls everything together. This next one's gonna be a twofer. I'm grabbing the wood cutting board as well as one of my challenge items. 
I was super excited about this project because I've wanted to do this for a while and so this just happened to work out. I started by measuring the wood cutting board to figure out what size I needed to cut my decal. Now I found this file that you're about to see on Etsy and I cut it in two different colors. Now I'm going to apply it with heat transfer vinyl and you're probably thinking Whitney why are you using heat transfer vinyl on wood? Well the main reason is because I wanted to have the evil queen text be red glitter and I didn't have any regular vinyl like that so just because of the pieces and supplies I had that's why I went that route. So I cut it out and weeded it and then I cut some extra of the carrier sheet just so I could fit everything down on there and then I used my little mini press on the medium setting to press it down. It didn't take a ton of pressure or a ton of heat and it was hooked to the board. Now if you have the colors that you want go ahead and use regular vinyl. Permanent vinyl will work perfect on this. I just really like the sheen of the red. Then I added some just gingham valentine's day ribbon because i thought it pulled in the fall vibe and i really really love how this turned out but we're not done yet i had these apples in my stash because i bought them last year to do this project and i never got around to it so these are going to be apples to go with that sign i started by taking a sharpie and just drawing out all the drips as well as the face that you see in the snow white movie and then i outlined that with my glue gun and after my glue was dry, I got rid of all the little wispies. Then it was time to break out that challenge item and I took off the lids and they looked like cups that you would do a medical like test in, if you know what I'm saying. So I had to add some hot glue to make them not look like that. I also added glue around the little ridges at the top so it didn't look like a lid was missing. Then I mixed together some spring green apple barrel paint as well as this pearlized green Arteza paint and I did the pearlized so you kind of had that nice shine that you see in the movie. I painted around all of my hot glue pieces. I used a detail brush to get into all of the crevices and then I let it dry. I ended up having to repeat that two times so that I had three coats of paint. It didn't fully cover but by the third coat it was the look I was going for. I also did two of them in white so that I had green and white from the movie. Then I took my containers outside and spray painted them black to give them a spooky feel. Then I covered the hot glue pieces with some extra paint that I did on the apples so it matched and it looked like it was kind of an overflowing container at the Evil Queen's Apple Orchard. Then to put together my vignette, I also grabbed this little $5 bucket from Target. I added my apples and my sign and I'm just leaning it up against a pumpkin that I had. But my little containers are so fun. It looks like they're overflowing with that evil poison goo. And this is my kind of Halloween spooky but still cute. Let's check three items off the list from Jennifer's box. I'm going to do this big wood sign, the small square sign, and we're also going to grab these Dollar Tree stencils. So first we're going to hook these signs together. So I decided to use the back of the sign essentially. So I had that flat wood. I put some wood glue on the back and then glued my smaller sign to the center. After I smeared around the wood glue, I used some clamps and let it dry for about 20 minutes and then popped the clamps off to reveal my new sign to work with. I stained the entire thing with Early American Stain by Minwax and then it was ready to customize. So the first thing I did was cut out this printable that I created in Canva to the size of the sign. It was about four and three quarters inches. Then I took some double sided tape so I could hook my piece down and I like doing this so that my ink isn't going to run with Mod Podge. It just sticks right down. And then I took this maple leaf stencil off of the pack from Jennifer and I used some black paint because I didn't want to take away from the printable but the outside looked kind of blah. So I took the stencil and kind of put the leaf in a variety of different directions to stencil on and I finished it off with a little bit of jute twine at the bottom and this thing turned out so cute and it was so easy to put together. Next I'm grabbing these paper bags from the box. I'm super thankful that every fall is usually when I spend a lot of time with friends and family and you get invited over to somebody's house and you don't have something to bring. Well, I wanted to make these fun envelopes so that I could take some either gift cards or write some little messages. So I cut out these four by four inch printables, put them onto my little envelopes with some double sided tape, popped a couple holes with a hole punch and then tied it with some fall colored yarn. 
Then I'm going to put these in my container with all of my cards. And this is just a nice way to tell people you're thankful for them. I'll probably throw some Starbucks gift cards in these and give them to friends. You could also put these into packages. You could give them to your neighbors. You could also just write a message on the back and put some seeds in there. A ton of different options, but it's a super quick and easy way to look like you tried hard and that you thought of someone. So in my mind, I've got a super cute idea for these wood rings, so let's try that out. All right, so this is also gonna be my project where I am not using glue. So this is a template that I just traced on my computer screen from a Pinterest pin that I saw. There was a bat kind of cutout that I wanted to do, and I couldn't find their template, so I just made my own. I traced it and cut it out, and then I took some twine and tied it around the center. I could not find my black twine. I probably would have liked that, but jute twine adds to the rustic appeal. Once the center is tied, I'm just taking it and tying it onto one of those wood rings, and we are making some cute little napkin holders for my Halloween tablescape. Once you fluff out your bat, you can just grab your napkins. These I just got for our table from Amazon. Super cute, fun for Halloween cute little bat on there to hold it together and you've got a fun little setup for either just decor or when folks come over for a Halloween or fall dinner party. Because I liked how those turned out so much I decided to make some with pumpkins as well. I used a Dollar Tree pumpkin cutout and traced it on the felt then I cut it out and added two slits at the top. I looped my jute twine in and out of the pumpkin so it ended up coming out to end up with and then I could tie a little bow in the front and that hid the little slits that I made to hook it to the ring because we can't glue it on you guys that is the challenge. I really like how these turned out as well they're great with these buffalo check napkins also from Amazon and they are just a fun way to add some additional oomph to your table. This next one's a twofer. I've got my plastic grocery bag, which is Courtney's twist, but I heard it came from Bargain Bethany. So Bethany, hopefully this turns out and you don't stump me. And I'm also going to grab those little pom-poms from Jennifer's challenge. And we're also going to use some of that twine that Jennifer sent me. So the second that I heard that we had to use a grocery sack and then I saw this fluff, I thought, okay, I'm going to paper mache. Well, I put Jennifer's pom-poms in there and it was like sad sauce. It was not going to be the size I needed. So I had to grab some polyfill from my stash to fill out the bag a little bit more to make a fuller pumpkin. I tied up the top and then I used the twine from the box to tie off the grooves of the pumpkin. I cut a bunch of pieces the same length and then tied them around. I did one around one side, the other side, and then I filled in any gaps. Then what's a pumpkin without a stem? So to make mine, I cut up some tin foil. I just rolled it up and kind of used it as a little bit of modeling clay to create the top. And then I grabbed some masking tape to hook it onto my bag. Then it was time to mix up my paper mache mixture. Now I'm following a tutorial I found on YouTube. I will link it down below. It's a great tutorial. It's gonna be a better teacher than I am here. But she suggested that you mix water, flour, and some school glue until you get a mixture that's like runny pancake batter. So that's what I did because her pumpkins looked awesome. I also have a ton of this packing paper left over from our move, so I'm using this. But if you want to recreate it, you can use newspaper. I also wanted to put some gloves on because I didn't want to have all of that gunk all over my hands. And then it was time to take my little ripped pieces of packing paper and start to paper and mache. It took me back to middle school art class, I mean even young art class, and I was way too meticulous for my own good. I just wanted to make sure all those grooves stayed that I tied off, and all you're going to want to do is dunk it in your mixture, use your fingers to kind of get off any excess water and goo and gunk, and then apply it. Now the hardest part was getting it to stick to the foil, but once it did, it was good to go. Let that dry, flip it over, and I'm using a vase here so that I don't mess up my stem. And then we're going to cover the bottom using the exact same method. So once your bottom is covered, let it completely dry, and then we're gonna repeat that whole step all over again. So you're gonna have two layers of either your newspaper or your packing paper over the top of your bag pumpkin. If you want to be able to take your polyfill out of your pumpkin, no worries, just leave a little space at the bottom. You can go ahead and cut the hole and pull it out. You just wanna do this after you do two layers instead of the one so it doesn't sink in on itself. Once you get it all out, just take a little bit more of that paper and seal up the bottom. 
So after two coats, they were still looking a little rough. So the video I watched suggested that you use some paper towels to cover it and kind of get a more seamless look. So you dunk it in just like you did the paper and apply it around the outside, kind of like a wet cast material. You guys, this is the game changer. It helps make it look so much more put together. You just want to take your finger while it's wet over the seams and really rub it in so you don't have a lot of patchwork happening. Now at this point I felt really confident. I decided to do a huge pumpkin because I thought, hey, I already have the supplies out. Let's try it. It went really great. I was really proud of myself. It was looking good. It was bigger than my head. I was really excited. And then if you're going to make a large one, you're probably going to want to leave your polyfill in. I put the final step on this one and it just straight up deflated on me. It looks like a really sad bean bag. I've spent so much time on this darn pumpkin. I don't want it to die. So we are gonna try to resuscitate it. I put some more filling in the bottom here. Fingers crossed the big one turns out. That seemed to help. So I covered the whole thing in the paper towel method and let that dry. So I decided to paint the first one in this jack-o'-lantern orange color. I also did one in like a burnt orange color and I was doing this the night before it was due and I just was having a rough go. It's 11 o'clock the night before this video is going up. I just got this nice gunk in my paint and it shot all over my table. We're just gonna keep painting. We're just gonna keep painting. Try not to fall asleep or lose our mind. Do -do -do. Nonetheless, I was able to press on, finish my pumpkins. I used the color chocolate brown on the stem and then I also used it in some of the grooves and buffed it out with some more of that jack-o'-lantern orange to give it some dimension and make it not look so flat. That tutorial was actually a game changer so I will link that down below if you want to learn how to paper mache because again this was my first time since like sixth grade doing this but I really like these. It looks super cute and a little pumpkin patch set up and I know you guys are dying to know what happened to the big pumpkin. Well, let me tell you, by restuffing it, it worked out. This thing is huge. This is awesome for a pumpkin patch display. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it. I need to touch it up a little bit more, but it turned out so good. I actually like paper mache and I might try it more now. That's gonna do it for this round of the mystery box challenge. Now you've gotta head down to the comments and let me know what was your favorite project I did today. How do you think I did with all those challenges? I am exhausted from all of the projects, but I love how everything turned out. So I'd love to hear from you. Up next for you is Jazz's video. So head down to the description for the full playlist. You'll head to her video and then you can hop to each video until you come back around to me. And if you are starting here with me, be sure to let the other creators know in a comment that I sent you over to their video and hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.